So for those of you who've been living in a hole somewhere, this is Lindsay Lohan. Uh, Lindsay started out her life as a natural born redhead, but throughout her life, especially once she reached adulthood, she started alternating her hair color between really unflattering shades of blonde and brunette. But despite this, no scientist would ever look at Lindsay and say she was anything other than human. Even when Lindsay eventually falls down the celebrity drain of Botox and facelifts, she will still be human. She will still be homo sapien sapien because the changes that she's making to herself are not biologically relevant. So beneath blonde Lindsay over there is the skull of the animal that I study. That's an oreodont. Oreodonts were sort of camely, sheepy, piggy things. We're not really sure what they were because they have no modern descendants and they're all dead. Depending on who you talk to, there's between 72 and 142 different species, which is a really, really big difference in opinion. So the problem is this. Modern biologists, they can say that a species is defined as a group of organisms that can interbreed with one another. But unlike modern organisms and modern celebrities, we actually have no idea who was sleeping with who in the fossil record. So we have to rely on different means. And we usually do that by looking at skull characteristics, things like the shape of the ear bones, the shape of the teeth, but that can be a little bit sticky as well. These three teeth right here, depending on who you talk to, might belong to one, two, or three different oreodont species. Is that little squiggle at the top actually biologically relevant, or is it the same sort of thing as red hair versus blonde hair? The way that we have to determine this is by looking at modern variation in modern animals, and that's what I do. I measure and measure and measure camel skulls, pig skulls, and sheep skulls so that when I look at oreodonts, I know what level of variation is acceptable within and between species. So why do you care? Well, 56% of vertebrate life today is at risk, vulnerable, or endangered. And that does include some of the wild cousins of our favorite animals, which make bacon and woolly sweaters. So in order to understand the extinctions that are happening today, we need to understand the extinctions that happened in the past. And oreodonts are a great test case. For 20 million years, oreodonts were absolutely everywhere. For about 10 million years, they were present but not prevalent, and then they were all gone. If we can understand what factors put oreodonts at risk, maybe we can understand what factors make animals at risk today. Oreodonts went extinct without human help. Maybe we can use oreodonts to solve some of our current problems, but we can't do anything with oreodonts if we don't understand the difference between one species and another. And that's what my research goes to clarify. Thank you.